And we'll send you out a no-obligation information kit absolutely free. 866-928-3310. The CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast is now on Stitcher. Listen to us on your iPhone, Android phones, BlackBerry, and WebOS phones. Stitcher is smart radio for your phone. Find it in your app store or at Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. Are you ready, Steve? Uh-huh. Andy? Yeah! Bert? Well, all right, fellas. Well, it's time! You're listening to CFRN, the Christian Financial Radio Network. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Over 85,000 titles. Choose from mystery, romance, religion, science, technology, business, New York Times bestsellers, even children's books. You name it, Audible has it. With 85,000 titles to choose from, you're sure to find the perfect audiobook for yourself or to give as a gift, and it's absolutely free. Just point your browser to audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. That's audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN and become a part of the audiobook revolution by downloading your free audiobook today. audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Hey, trader, want to get rich quick? Well, good luck with that. If, on the other hand, you actually want to learn how to trade, the place to be is www.cfrn.net. Tune in Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern, for our daily devotional, and then spend the next three hours learning how it's done from professional traders who actually trade for a living. That's www.cfrn.net. Every trading day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to the CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast. This is the daily broadcast of Indeterminate Length, where we discuss all things E-Mini, along with some really big ideas on the finer points of trading gold, bonds, crude, sugar, the euro, and even T-bills. Joining us today from our studios in Boston, Mr. Michael Bork. From our trading desk in Chicago, Mr. Burton Schlichter. Now, to get things started, let's go to our host and founder in Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Here's Dwayne. Hey, good afternoon. Welcome back. Today is Friday, 23rd day of August, 2019. Thanks so much for joining us. Whoever you are, wherever you are, uh, we're just glad to have you right here, right now. And boy, what a morning it has been. Uh, a fabulous Friday, if there ever was one. God bless President Trump. <laughs> he is the volatility machine, man. When he starts tweeting, oh boy, break out the mouse, because it's time to go trading. Now, I understand investors just want the market to go higher. 401ks, IRAs, you just want it to go up. That's all you're asking, not much. Now, as traders, we have a different perspective on the market. We aren't particularly, we don't particularly care if it goes up or down as long as it goes somewhere, especially when it goes somewhere via a directional move. Wow. Doesn't get much better than that. Let me put up a chart. S&P 500 E-mini futures. Let me, we'll talk about that later. Let me just show you this. Okay. Do we have a weekly trading zone below that one? Look what happened. Price went from zone, down to the zone, back up to the zone, down to the zone, down to the zone. 
and here we sit. Okay, 2878 slash 79. Below that, we're looking at 2864 slash 65. And that looks to be about where we've found at least some intermediate support. Okay, now if I had just put these zones on the chart today, that wouldn't be such a big thing. But I want you to understand that these zones that you see on this chart, they go out to our partners and passport holders every Monday morning, 6.15 a.m. Eastern, so that our traders have a chance to get them on their charts before Wall Street even wakes up for the week. You know, we go to work Sunday night, 6 p.m. Eastern, when Globex opens. So we really do get a jump on the rest of the world uh, when it comes to the markets and trading. The zones have been published every Monday since December 14th of 2009. They have behaved exactly the way they're behaving right here, right now for almost a decade. If I go back in time <clears throat> on historical charts and apply the same methodology, the good news is they've always done that since, since the inception. Of course, I can't take credit for anything that happened before I came along. In fact, I don't even take credit for this. I mean, I don't make it happen. We don't make it happen. The market does all the heavy lifting. We do have a unique insight into the markets. And uh, we're able to share it with our partners, our passport holders, and you. And my charts hang in a little bit because of all this activity, all this volume we have plowing through the markets. Look at that bounce. Hang on. I'm going to get this zone on in a minute, and then I'll stop fidgeting with my chart. Okay. Ta-da. Is there another zone below that? Yeah, there is. Uh, should we, after we bounce off of 64.65, there's another zone below at 28.30 slash 31. Do I think we'll see that in this session? Mm, probably not, but, you know, you got to embrace all possibilities. These are the best of times. They really are, as far as trading goes. Glad you're here with us. Now, if you can't see this chart I have up that I'm talking about, go to our homepage at CFRN.net. On the right-hand side of the page, click the big microphone. Follow the instructions. You'll be registered in about 30 seconds. That's going to give you one-click access to the show each and every day. On the days that you're out of the office, away from your desktop, not a problem. Go to youtube.com slash CFRN slash live. There you will find a real-time simulcast of the show as it unfolds, brought to you by the good folks at YouTube. Thanks, YouTube. Now, if you're participating today, if you're watching today, from the live stream on YouTube, that chat box is not open. So what you do is you launch Telegram, go to the alert trial discussion group, and there you can post your questions, just like the folks do who've logged in through the software on our website. All righty, all righty. There's so much to talk about, so much to cover. Let me just Give you one little bit of news first. The Winklevoss twins, Bitcoin bulls and founders of the Gemini Crypto Exchange, say it's retail investors who are still largely reaping the benefits of the crypto market. In an interview with CNN Business yesterday, Tyler and Cameron Winklevoss, you might remember that name uh, from the movie, I think, what was it called? Social Network? 
Anyway, they're the guys who uh, were in with Zuckerberg at the beginning of Facebook, and then he kind of outed them and or ousted them, and they sued him, and now they have a lot of money. Okay. They gave their perspective during this interview yesterday on Bitcoin as an investment, industry risks, and the traditional financial sector's approach to the new asset class. You see what's happened here in such a short period of time? We've gone from, is it real, to calling it a new asset class. While many still regard Bitcoin as too risky a bet for the average investor, Tyler argued that on the contrary, the retail sector remains one step ahead of financial institutions when it comes to crypto. He argued that unlike the internet, which you couldn't buy a piece of, you can actually buy a piece of this new internet of money. It's still a retail driven market from day one, and a lot of people have done really well, while Wall Street has been asleep at the wheel. Of all traditional investments, Cameron added, Bitcoin is most similar to gold, a new store of value for the digital era. And while it may be volatile, it's the future, he said, underscoring, we had to invest because we were afraid of missing out. That's called FOMO, fear of missing out. We couldn't miss out on the future. While the twins were, as ever, keen to demonstrate their readiness to liaise with regulators, compliance, according to Cameron, is the DNA of our business, they nonetheless called out a degree of alarmism that continues to cloud perceptions of the risks associated with crypto. Facebook's Libra, Tyler argued, hasn't even been launched. No one's using it for anything illicit. And yet there's a regulatory den surrounding it already. In fact, some of the folks that are part of the Libra group are talking about walking. And while Bitcoin may have been used by bad actors, think Silk Road and the Kremlin's Internet Research Agency during the 2016 elections, many of those are now in jail. Smart criminals, Tyler noted, aren't using Bitcoin because it's actually very traceable, with ever more sophisticated blockchain forensic tools being developed. The bottom line, more criminals have used the dollar than anything else. As recently reported, the Winklevoss twins have revealed they are open to partnering with arch rival Mark Zuckerberg on Libra with the caveat that they still need to learn more about the full details of the project. So there you go, a little bit of news. Let me go over the numbers with you from around the world. Now these are the cash markets. I'm gonna start here in the US Right now, the Dow is down 419 points. NASDAQ, now that's over 1.5%. NASDAQ's down 164. That's over 2%. S&P 500 down 49, 1 and 3 quarter percent. Russell 2000 is down 30, a little over 2%. You may remember on Monday's show that I talked about a discussion I had in Telegram Sunday night and that was that the markets were opening the week, very bullish, but that by the close of the week, I anticipated prices being substantially lower. Now, I had no way of knowing President Trump was gonna send out that tweet today, or that China was gonna make the statement and take the action that they say they're taking. <coughs> I don't <clears throat> want you to think <clears throat> that in any way do we pretend to be psychic or clairvoyant or that we got some big secret nobody else has? No, no, that's not it at all. Later in the show, using the charts, I will show you why it was very logical to me when I addressed the charts, the market Sunday night on the Globex Open. I'm gonna show you exactly how I was able to make that statement with confidence not because I know the future, but because we understand and teach all of our students to know what the next high probability move is in the markets. 
does the market always do the next high probability thing? No. But we always know what it is. Then we just have to wait and see if the market's going to do it. And if it does, man, we just hit your ride. Do we catch our goal for the day, the week, the month, whatever your measuring stick is? Cash the check and put the mouse away. All right, in the commodity basket, crude oil is down $1.73, trading 53.62 last. That's a drop of over 3%. Gold, up, go gold, up $27.70. That's almost 2%. Trading 15.3620 last. In the Asian markets, at the close, the Nikkei posted a gain of 82 points. Shanghai posted a gain of 13. And the Hang Seng finished up 130. No movers and no shakers there. In European markets, FTSE closed down 33. DAX was down 135. And for the DAX, that's a loss of a little over 1%. And the CAC dropped 61 points, and for the CAC, that's also a drop of a little over 1%. That gives us a green day in Asia, a red day in the UK, and it's a big red radio Friday here in the US of A. Let's go to Michael, get a recap of everything that happened in the live training room this morning. Our, our traders uh, got a real treat this morning. Valerie, Michael had to be out for a bit and take care of a couple things. Valerie stepped in. She called the markets. She was putting on, taking off, doing everything that Michael does. She had a great teacher and she did a great job this morning. So this bell's for both of y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I wish I was there for that first hour. The way the markets were today. I, ha I have a tape of it. I'll send it to you. Okay. All right. Okay, the charts are uh, yours, and I'll be yep. here when you're done. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, let me bring this up. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Friday, the 23rd day of August, 2019. Um, if you have not taken a free trial with us, go to the homepage at CFRN.net. Right over here in the right-hand column, it says five-day free trial. Apply.CFRN.net. If you click on that. You will be brought to this page where all we ask for on this page is well uh, hang on okay hold on let me yeah, let me close close that and come here and go here Okay. Uh, all we ask for on this page is your name, your email, and your phone number, and you can tell us your biggest trading challenge so we can tailor one-on-one -on -one training specifically to you. Hit the send button, you'll be sent a confirmation link. You must click on the confirmation link. Okay, we don't know you took the trial. Uh, we don't know you took the trial until you, uh, until you click that confirmation link. Okay. Um, all right. Now you could also go directly to this page. It's eminitrainingschool.com. Okay. And there is that. All right, results. Now I only traded one hour today, but I had the highest day that I've had that one hour in probably two years. <laughs> um, today we've got 50 ticks on the Euro, three ticks on uh, crude oil 11 ticks on gold and 20 ticks on the es that put us at 702 dollars and 50 cents um today it took 10 minutes in one trade to get the goal for the day at that point i was up 100 dollars a contract and we took a total of 11 trades today so on the month now we're at 6033 dollars that's over 17 days averaging 354 dollars per day on the year we're at 23,585 dollars that's over 151 days, averaging $156 per day. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, if you're going to read the spreadsheet, you read all the C CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. All right. Now, let's go take a look at what I did. 
Now, Valerie put a couple of trades on this morning, too. Um, but I didn't get in until 1030. And I'm glad I was able to get in then. Because um, that thing that I was at was supposed to last until 11. All right. Here we got plus one tick. And then I missed a trade right here. Would have been a nice profitable trade. I, I missed a couple of nice trades on gold today. <clears throat> and I picked up another 10 ticks right here. Put me at plus 11 on gold. And then we get into the break. And let's see. Mm -hmm. I was going into the high of the day. And it spun around and started coming down. And it looks like there was a shorting opportunity right in there. And another one right here. Okay, and another one right there. And there. And that was it for the gold today. Okay. Um, on the euro, somewhere in here, I picked up 34 ticks. I think it was right in here. I had an order on and I picked up 34 ticks somewhere right in that area. And I don't know if I had the order on from back here or, or what I did, but we, the first trade was right here. We picked up 14 ticks on that one. And then we had another trade right in here and I picked up 34 ticks on that one to put us at plus 50 on the euro. Um, and that was all that we did with the euro, but it did move. Um, during the break, there was an opportunity there and there. And let's see, there was a short opportunity right there. And another shorting opportunity there and there and there. Um, and that was all during the break. Okay. Now, crude, which is my favorite market. We we started out with crude. That's where we got the goal for the day, where I got my goal for the day. Okay. Valerie got hers in the first hour. Um, but I got mine, you know, 10 minutes after I got back. Um, now, I missed a nice trade right here. That would have got me the goal for the day. But then I picked up this one right here. Got 10 ticks profit on that. And then I missed a short right here, which is too bad. And I got stopped out pretty much to the tick right here. That put me back down to plus two. Okay. Then, let's see. It looks like I got a break even right there. I missed that long. I missed that long. Both of those are profitable trades. I missed this short, which would have been great. And I missed that short, which I didn't even notice. And I missed that short. But the markets, you know, the data was coming through in chunks. Um, so it was, you know, some of this stuff came out all at once. That's probably why I missed so many. Um, but right here, I picked up one tick and that put us at plus three. Um, there was another short right here that I missed. And looks like one more right there. Then it changed directions and really didn't get anything. No, no, this is where I picked up one tick. Okay, that other one was gonna break even. Um, all right. Uh, there was a shorting opportunity right there. Oops, it was right there. Um, uh, momentum short here that didn't go anywhere. That would have been a break even. shorting opportunity right there and then it changed directions on us and there was a bounce off the BBC right here that looks like it probably would have stopped out yeah, this is all during the break and there's a shorting opportunity right here that would still be active right now okay okay and the ES let's see
find the trade setups here on the ES. Well, when I woke up this morning and I turned the room on, these markets were cranking. Okay, I, I have some trades missing here. Hang on. We're getting there. Okay. I didn't come in until 1030, but there are some trades missing here. I don't know where they are. Um, there was a long trade right here that I missed. That would have been a nice profitable trade right up into the zone. Um, and we had a short trade. I think it was over over here somewhere where I picked up 24 ticks. Um, and then um, well, then price was just dropping here. Um, but my charts at the time were it was all coming through really chunky um but i stopped out of one es coming up here i think uh, we had a long right here that would have worked out just fine a long right there um a short right here uh, let's see another short there and somewhere in here you know, there were more shorts. I picked up four more ticks, but I didn't I didn't see my stop out. I know I went by it. There it is. Okay. There was another short here that I missed. There was a long in here that I missed, a long in here that I missed. This is the highest probability trade setup right here. Because the MA1 stayed blue on the pullback to the BBC. Okay, and the cycle was blue. And we stopped out pretty much to the tick right over here. And then it moved up. And let's see. There was a shorting opportunity in here. Somewhere in here, I picked up another four ticks. Because after the stop out, we went from 24 to 16, back to 20. This is what we did. Um, and let's see. Right here was a long. Uh, in here would have been a short. And in here would have been a long. Here would have been a short. This is all during the break. Okay, then it got really choppy, and it finally broke out of the chop, and it gave a short opportunity right there. Another one right there. And... Well, um, a long opportunity there and there. And we just gave a long opportunity here and it's got, got another one right now, right in there. Oof, that was a lot of movement today. And that was just in the time that I was here. You know, I missed the first hour. But this morning when I opened the room up, you know, I opened it up at a little before a little before six this morning, and uh, and then when I came back, um, a little bit before eight, and opened it up again because somehow it had shut off all by itself. I opened it up again, and that's when I saw these. I'll show you these huge legs right here. While they were being developed, that was something to see. I put everything on a 15 minute chart for a little while and these two were having the same type of legs. This one wasn't really doing much and this one was having just the total opposite. Um, but anyway. Okay. 
If you're going to read the spreadsheet, you're going to read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Today is the 23rd day of August 2019. Today we made 50 ticks in the euro, 3 ticks in crude oil, 11 ticks in gold, and 20 ticks on the ES. And that put us at 702.50. Um, today it took me 10 minutes in one trade to get to the goal for the day. At that point, I was up $100 a contract. And we took a total of 11 trades today. So on the month now, we're up $6,033. That's over 17 days, averaging $354 per day. On the year, we're up $23,585. That's over 151 days, averaging $156 per day. Okay, now, if you have not taken the free trial with us, go to the homepage at CFRN.net. Over here in the right-hand column, it says five-day free trial, apply.CFRN.net. Click on that and you'll be brought to this page. You can go to this, this page directly if you want to. It's eminitrainingschool.com. All we need is your name, your email, your phone number, and you can tell us your biggest training challenge so we can tailor one-on-one training specifically for you. Okay, hit the send button. You'll be sent a confirmation link, which you must click on, and then we will send you all the information you need to, en <laughs> to enjoy five luxurious days in our live training room. Okay. All right. And with that, we can pass it back out to fabulous Phoenix, Arizona, Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Dwayne, if you are ready. Sir, I am. Okay. And chart. Okay. Yep. Uh, recap of the recap. Uh, today, it took me 10 minutes and one trade to get to the goal for the day. It took Valerie 20 minutes and two trades to get to the goal for the day. So I didn't count her stuff in, in all this. But um, yeah, 10 minutes and one trade. Good to job. Get to one, That's a good bingo for to yes. both of you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, doubled up. Okay. Uh, Hey, did you already answer Roy's question? Um, I just saw it. He just typed it in. Okay. Um, how many trades were taken to show average win per trade? It's actually already, it's actually already calculated for you, I think. Um, yeah. Let's see, 167 trades were taken so far this month. Um, and. That's 9.8 trades per day is what it averages out to. And you would just have to... Now, there's a couple of other columns over here that that I don't usually go over, but um, you can look at them if you want. Um, net profit with an $8 commission is this. Net profit with a $5 commission is this. You can divide those numbers by 167. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Calculate it all by yourself. Alrighty. Great month. Good job. Right. Um, yeah. Speaking of number of trades, I will show you. We'll start here. Uh, Valerie was kind enough to just tally this up for us. <clears throat> She's out running an errand. On Logic 247 this week, now that doesn't include the concierge, that's a separate issue. But on the Logic 247, we issued a total of 79 alerts so far. Uh, there's a possibility I'll see something that I like during the show today or after the show before the markets close but as it stands now 79 alerts issued 14 never triggered that left us with 65 actionable alerts 13 were stopped out yesterday I made a little video and I talked about I think I brought it up on the show here we had actually dipped below our benchmark average which is 20% of actual alerts being stopped out over the past year. There's a couple weeks that we did come in just a tad over 20%, and there were weeks that we came in, you know, at like 10%. But when I talked about it yesterday, 22% of actionable alerts had been stopped out at the time of yesterday's broadcast. And I said, well, let's see if we can pull it out and. Thank you, Donald Trump. <laughs> A 
because he played a part <clears throat> in us uh, turning that thing around. Here is this week. Here's today. Short the ES at 29.15, uh, which is right in here. And so we'll, we'll, we'll go into, we'll dig down for some details on that later. Uh, the Dow, the NQ, and the crude. Let me just scroll up to the beginning. Now, last week, I think we had a total of 47 alerts. So it really depends upon market conditions. It doesn't have anything to do with me or with our methodology. Uh, we report opportunity as it develops per our understanding of the markets. And so last week, the market handed us 58 total alerts, <clears throat> eight never triggered, 48 actionable alerts, seven were stopped out. So last week, 14.6% of alerts were stopped out. This week, week 55, Sunday night, we go to work, 6 p.m. Eastern, okay? Thumbs up means price found the target. A red X means price found the stop before it found the price target. <clears throat> and when you see Z's, that means it never triggered, okay? <clears throat> and then we're into Monday. So all of this was from last Sunday night. Now just think about that for just a moment, okay? The majority of the world, investors, traders, really don't even think about markets until Monday morning, 9.30 a.m. Eastern, when Wall Street opens, right? So uh, is this the best kept secret in trading? I don't know. We've been shouting it from the rooftops for a pretty long time. Now, I have seen some knucklehead on the internet made a post about, oh, these guys talk about trading at night and stuff. There's no volume. You, you can't do that. Oh, you know, people should really engage their brain before they open their mouth, I think, you know. Let's look at just last night, ordinary night. <clears throat> Let's go back to midnight. Okay, this is the S&P 500 E-mini futures. <clears throat> During this 30-minute candle that my red cursor crosshair is on, there were, there was 1,400 contracts traded in that 30-minute period, midnight, Eastern, dead of night. And if we move over to the next 30-minute candle, there was, come on, candle. Give me a tool tip. This volume's still pretty strong. Let me get hovered over one of them. Maybe if I open it up a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, maybe that'll help. Maybe that'll help me. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. Okay, so on this 30 minute candle, 1,700 contracts. This 30 minute candle, 15. This 30 minute candle, 14. This one, 2,000. This one, come on, uh, 5,000. See, it's increasing as we approach the London Open, which is 3 a.m. Eastern. So this next candle, 3 a.m. Eastern, see right there, it jumped to 10,000 in that 30-minute candle right there. Now, unless you're trading an awful lot of contracts, <clears throat> this is quite tradable. And the beautiful thing for West Coast traders, now, the negative for a West Coast trader is if you want to trade the Wall Street Open, uh, the opening bell is 6.30 a.m. Pacific time. The other end of that deal is if you want to trade the London Open, all you got to do is stay up till midnight Pacific, that's 3 a.m. Eastern, that's the London Open. You know, many days you can probably be done by 1 a.m., 2 a.m., go to bed, sleep in. You don't have to get up at 6.30 for the Wall Street Open. So that works out real, real nicely for some of our West Coast traders. We even have East Coast traders <clears throat> who maybe they got to go to work in the morning at 6 or 7. So they get up at, you know, they go to bed early, get up 2.45, trade the London Open, get their goal for the day. And then they got a little time to, you know, maybe do a daily devotional or just relax, walk the dog, listen to some music, pack their lunch, whatever, and then off to work. So becoming a trader 
the day job used to really get in the way of that. Not anymore. Plus, with Logic 247, you don't have to spend 80% of your time looking for the next trade setup. Even professional, profitable traders that don't work for a hedge fund, they spend 80% of their time looking for the next high probability trade setup. Now, 80% is a lot. If you think about it, it's four days out of a five day week. So you spend four days looking cumulatively to spend one day trading. Now, the talent at the hedge funds, they don't have to do that. Why? Because the hedge fund hires analysts. See, an analyst and a trader, two different things, two different worlds. But boy, do they work good together. So the talent at the hedge fund, instead of spending 80% of their time looking, their analyst has done the looking. The analyst shoots them over via the Bloomberg terminal. Exactly, exactly the kind of stuff that you're seeing in the Logic 247 channel. And so the talented trader at the hedge fund, he just does what he does best or she trade, make it rain. They're called rainmakers. It's what they do. Now, it would be great if every retail trader in the world could have their own analyst, but when you're just starting out, most of us have to scrape together just to fund our account. We can't afford $175,000 a year, which is the starting salary for even a mediocre analyst, plus health benefits and vacation pay. Ah, it's crazy, right? So look at this. You don't want to spend 175,000 a year? I have good news. This isn't a Bloomberg terminal. That's a waste of money anyway. But here we go, Sunday night, Lobex open, 6 p.m. Eastern. Thumbs up means price found the target. Red X means stopped out. And the Z's mean no trigger. So that was Sunday. Here's Monday. Here's Tuesday. Coming up on Wednesday. See, we had a stretch there. The market turned. So we had a bunch of them that didn't trigger. There's another stop out. No trigger. No trigger. And we had, and I commented on this yesterday in that video. One, two, three, four, five stop outs in a row. Now, let me ask you a question. If you got stopped out five times in a row, most of us, we get stopped out two or three times. It's like a mule kicked us in the belly. And we just want to go find a hole to crawl into. And that's not, this is part of trading, okay? If I can get five thumbs up in a row, I got to believe that there's going to be days when there's what you see. All right, now I guess we're into Thursday. Another stop out. Another stop out, another stop out. Now we're into Friday. Thank you, President Trump. Now let me show you these statistics for this week. Michael, or I'm sorry, Valerie gathered them for me. This week... We've had 79 alerts, 14 never triggered, 65 actionable alerts, 13 were stopped out, which puts us right on the nose at where we've been on average for the past year. 20% of actionable alerts were stopped out. John, welcome to the show. Hi there. Good to have you with us. Thanks. Good to be here. Thanks. Uh, the um, Well, you know, every, everything we said yesterday, I, you, you probably kind of got a sense from the way we went through a lot of issues yesterday that something pretty big was about to happen. And uh, if you remember, I said to put a buy stop on the on the uh, nugget just above the market. Actually, I said 36. Right. Currently, currently it's 39.20. Hit 39.65 a while ago this morning. And on the on the JNUG, similar level was around 78, I think. 70, I told a few people to put a buy stop in at, at 78 plus going up. And, uh, you know, we talked about the uh, options. Uh, if somebody had taken the 80 options yesterday uh, on the JNUG, uh, they're 88 right now. They were out of the money yesterday by a couple of bucks, two or three dollars. They're uh, currently eight eight dollars in the money. How about that? That's that's wow. better than uh, yeah. that's better than you get on fast money or uh, options action. That's true. <laughs> so, Good call. So uh, they don't get moves like that very often. 
and uh, a lot of the time they're hedged because they always have complicated spreads and things, which is, you know, I'm not criticizing them for that because that's kind of a safe way to play it. But, you know, sometimes it it's pays to, to go all in and yesterday was one of those days that has happened today. And uh, I mean, look, we're, uh, we're in a totally different world today. And uh, we talked about how it looked like you know, it, I mean, we've done exactly the same what we did at 13 and a quarter before we went to 1400. That's on the gold, right? 13, you know, we had this consolidation. We did it at 1200 and then low 1200s before we went to 13, did it in the 13s before we went to 14, did it in the 14s, and now we're doing it in the 15s where we are basically building a base in the lower quadrant of the 1500. And we've just gone like a rocket this morning to uh, 1536, 1537. Um, and uh, that's a pretty big deal. Um, it's, uh, uh, you, you know, because we're, we're actually pushing up against those previous highs on, on the gold and the silver. Silver's up 35 right now. I wouldn't be surprised if it finishes up 50 cents before the day's out. Um, this is Big a fantastic finish for the gold. By the way, the other thing we were looking at was the dollar. I think uh, this Jackson Hole, th this is a day that will live in infamy in a way because it's kind of a, you know, this, this uh, I mean, Trump warned China, don't try to, uh, you know, fight or compete on this tariffs thing. And these guys, you know, they're not, a, they're not happy about the fact that, the U.S. is going to sell some jets to Taiwan, 16 or so, I think. Hmm. They're obviously pretty upset about that. And they said they were going to do something about it. I guess this is one of their one of the things they're doing. But in so doing, they have really ratcheted up this whole thing with uh, Trump uh, big time now because I, I wouldn't he's going to retaliate this afternoon. Obviously, the market is not taking it very well. Um, and because it was kind of rallying, you know, it had an initial shock, then it rallied up on the on Jerome Powell's speech. And then when Trump said he's going to retaliate this afternoon, then the markets tanked. So, but he's put out some, some of the strongest tweets he's ever done in his life, I guess, today. So it is a day that's going to live in infamy because this is a day he's basically thrown down the gauntlet and basically is recalling all companies from China and saying, quit you know it's time to quit china come home and that's a pretty powerful statement i mean look you can say whatever you want and the general democrats can you know hand ring and and, and cry or whatever they do this you know deadbeat dry diatribe they come up with every day on cnn and the and msnbc and all this just is just unpainful to listen to but it is the u.s holds all the cards i mean you know we, we, we're in an incredible position today. The real way to look at the US, and I was just doing this because I was actually looking at the population of Denmark and Ireland, you know, it's kind of interesting. Ireland uh, uh, is uh, four and a half, 4.8 million, going on five, about 4.8 million now, the Republic. Northern Ireland is about 1.8, so, you know, the, the uh, I guess a total of 6.5, something like that, but for the island. Um, the uh, the GDP of Ireland, I think, is approaching 350 or 370 billion. No, so, sorry, it's approaching uh, th th 380 right now, going on 400 billion. So you've got a four and a half, 4.8 million population uh, making 4 .8, 400 million. That's almost, you know, it's like it's about 80,000 a year, you know, for the GDP per capita, right. which is staggering, right? And then you look at Denmark and you've got five and a half million or, or more. And they're they're only about three three hundred and twenty uh, billion, I think, uh, GDP. So you know, Denmark is in, uh, and it's come out this morning that that uh, the Chinese were trying to, you know, get into Greenland ten, you know, a decade ago or, or a few oh, years really? ago. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh, you know, they wanted to basically they they wanted to do the same thing they've been doing in Africa, which is, and Venezuela, where they they borrow against assets and if they default, you know, like happened. So they, who knows how much of Venezuela, China actually owns today and a lot of Africa. And, you know, they're going to try and pull the same stunt with Greenland, but it didn't work. 
So this Greenland thing is, uh, you know, it may be at an impasse at the moment, but it may end up being acquired sooner or later, or some sort of a deal will be done where, uh, you know, it's a rounding error as far as the U.S. is concerned in terms of supporting Greenland, which is, you know, taking a lot out of, I mean, it's kind of like France, you know, France has is, is, is got all these colonies around the world, like New Caledonia. And, uh, I've, I've actually uh, been there. <laughs> yeah, it's a great place. Uh, uh, New Caledonia and uh, Guadalupe, the Tahiti and, and uh, uh, Martinique and places like that, and then these little islands here and there uh, that are all French territory. And I mean, you know, when you get to these islands, it's like being in France. It's uh, it's amazing. Um, <laughs> and it's interesting because a, a Pakistani a actress went to Bradford in England yesterday and said it was, was like being at home because that's the that's the uh, number one Pakistani settlement in the UK. So uh, it's it's interesting how these sort of uh, uh, enclaves become Amer become you know nationalized just the same as you know if you go to American Samoa uh, it's you know it's like being in the US or or uh, and then, uh, if you go to um, if you go to Chapala down in Mexico which is a kind of an enclave in Ajijic in Jalisco you know just outside of Guadalajara south of Guadalajara I mean it's it's like an American town and uh, uh, San Juan de las Casas and San Miguel de Allende, you know, these are kind of enclaves that are where there's a lot of Americans living. And uh, it's probably the same down in parts of Ecuador as well, like you were talking about yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the thing is that, you know, France is spending a lot of money to support these places around the world. Denmark's spending a huge, look, if they're, if they're, if their GDP is 400, uh, 300, sorry, 300, 320 billion, and they're spending five or 700 million, I think it's, yeah, I guess it's, it was, it's five or 700 million out of that is going to Greenland. You know, and there's a lot of, in spite of that, the, 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 uh, the unemployment is high and there's a lot of things going on. So you never know uh, this Greenland thing could, could get worked out. I mean, it w in my view, it would be, I mean, maybe it's different today because people are still getting used to Trump. But there was a time when a lot of, a lot of, I mean, even Ireland at one point was, was kind of gunning or lobbying to become a 51st state of, of the U.S., you know. Really? Really? So, really? Yeah, 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 that was a while back. But, um, uh, you know, the, it, 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 stranger things have happened. And so I think that... Uh, there could be out of this could come a stronger alliance with Denmark and Greenland in the future, in spite of this kind of tiff that's going on at the moment. Uh, but I think the Chinese situation is is really uh, going to be um, it, it's it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Going back to the U.S., you got this 500 million population, Canada, U.S., Mexico. They're the world's largest producer now of oil, probably 20, 20 million a barrel, 20 million barrels a day from the three countries combined. I mean, that is double of Saudi Arabia, double Russia. So, I mean, they're not in the league. Uh, and all that oil in, in being, you know, within the, the frontiers of the, of the U.S.-Mexico alliance, U.S.-Canadian-Mexico alliance is basically boosting the economies of all three countries uh, because the oil is, is not, you know, it's creating wealth within, within for each country. And then and a huge amount of money is not going out the door anymore to Saudi Arabia or anywhere else for the U.S. Uh, you know, there's, a, there's still importing a bit from Nigeria and Saudi Arabia maybe, but not much more. So uh, that's another reason why the U.S. economy is doing so well. And thirdly, with the steel coming back, and uh, with a lot of companies coming back to the U.S., um, they're in, they're in, they're in, you know the, the country's never been in better shape in a lot of ways. So, and Trump is Trump is basically saying that today we don't need China, and he's right because why why should we pay him five hundred billion a year? We, we're they're sucking they're still sucking five hundred billion a year out of us right now. Right. The quicker he shuts, the quick, so the quicker he gets that down to zero, the better, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> 
you know, so you know, then they then they can go in and, and revamp, revamp. We can rebuild the U.S. instead of build. We didn't rebuild China. The U.S. built China. They didn't rebuild it. But the U.S. needs to rebuild the U.S. It needs to upgrade the infrastructure all over the map. And there's enough. I mean, listen, if they signed a two trillion infrastructure deal tomorrow, I mean, this economy would explode. So, uh, you know, we can, uh, the U.S. can handle itself. The U.S. has never, has always been a kind of a self-contained economy. It's never really needed the rest of the world. Most of the time it's been carrying the rest of the world. I mean, for all of the 90s, remember, Germany was AWOL in the 90s for the whole of, the, mm -hmm. of this big run-up. And uh, uh, the, the, the U.S. was basically carrying the rest of the world for, for, for a good, good while in the 90s and they could do it again uh probably doing it again now but look the good news today is the dollar this is why i think it's a day that will live in infamy because i believe the, the secondary high was made this morning in the us dollar and we are tanking and uh that's why the gold i said to you several times i said wait till the dollar as soon as the dollar cracks the gold will be on afterburners, and I think you can say the afterburners are heating up today. Yes, they are. Uh, to, to go higher, and uh, this dollar, if you could put up the dollar, um, it would be a good, a good. I think the dollar is done. It really looks like it might be, uh, might be over for the dollar here. U.S. dollar currency index. Here we go. Look at that. This is a daily chart. If you want any other time frame, just let me know. Well. Um, we got a trend you know, line going from here to here to here, basically. Yeah, it's getting pretty close to yeah. getting broken. And if we get, and it looks like we're going to gap down now on Monday, because remember, Trump's probably going to throw throw down a bigger gauntlet this afternoon that probably hurt the dollar even more. What time is he supposed to speak, John? Do you know? I don't know. He just said he just said this afternoon. So mm. we'll see what he see what he comes up with. But uh, let's squeeze it up a little bit first and see how it looks the bigger picture it, it, it definitely looks like it's kind of rolling over now so you want to go weekly or monthly on it yeah i think that's the yeah i mean look at you know it's certainly re reached a kind of a barrier there and if it if it does break down from here it is uh it it, it i mean look there's a huge down leg to go see that if, I mean, we, could, if we could take out this low man then we would just literally free fall yeah. practically yeah right it could take it all the way down to 82. as far as i'm concerned 82 is about 2400 dollars gold and i think we could be there even before the end of the year you know certainly by the end of 2020 and it's i mean the lower dollar is going to be incredibly bullish for the us it's just uh, it, you know it's a uh, it's going to attract companies back to the U.S. Uh, because it's going to make the, com the country much more competitive in global terms. Here's a monthly uh, And by the way, remember yesterday we talked about the pound? Mm -hmm. Guess what? Pound, I mean, all the European, all the currencies took off this morning. It certainly looks like this is the beginning of a new up leg in the currencies. Um, and uh, so I think this is the beginning of something pretty big. We and, had an alert last night, a logic alert on uh, <clears throat> the British pound, 6BU9 there, uh, 122.55. Let's see where we're at now. 6BU. Go back to, go to 30 minute. <clears throat> yeah, look at that. 1227. Eight. This is a 30 minute, so we've been up as high off of that alert as 122.89. Yeah. So 55 to 89, that's. Uh, I think we said a dollar 20. It looks like one ago was a dollar 25 yesterday. Yeah. And it's on its way there. Have a look at Let's see what the daily looks like now, Dwayne. Okay. So. Here we go. And this thing has really uh, been hit hard of late. Yeah, but look, uh, yeah, I mean, look at interestingly. You see how the doji, uh, the the where it was turning there, and the uh, wasn't facilitating trade. Uh, quote uh, from Peter Steinlmeier. Talking here, you know, John, or no, the the, the, lower, the bottom one. Oh, down here. Yeah, yeah, okay. and we've seen we've seen that thing going on. You know, with the TBIX when when the TBIX is ready to turn up, we've seen that we we pointed that out. Mm -hmm. 
the recent bottom in the TVIX. So, you know, it's always a good idea to keep a sharp lookout for that. And in fact, with the gold, when the gold bottomed, similar sort of thing. Uh, it, now, the big thing, the big question is, are we going to go up on Monday and, and get up to 124, 125? Uh, very, very possibly we could. So, hey, John, were you ever able to get to the Twitter channel last night? Did you, you would ask me about it. I sent you. A, I said, "Oh, we got to talk." There's a whole bunch to talk about today <laughs> with Patrick Byrne. That was. Uh, he's all over the. He was everywhere last night. I guess you probably saw that, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I caught a number of his interviews. He, 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 he didn't got quite seem like he, himself. He got by uh, Trump. Sorry. He didn't quite seem like himself last night. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, he didn't. He kind of. He didn't. He he was not coming across. Kind of smell uh, like easy. John McAfee just a tad, and I'm worried about him because he's a good guy, Patrick. I don't yeah. know John McAfee, but Patrick's a good guy. Yeah, he uh, definitely, you know, X, Y, Z and all this and then sort of... Uh, See, he's always done yeah, that. He I, talked I about he, Sith Lords yeah. before on CNBC, yeah. and that people just, they teased him about that relentlessly. Yeah, I think that he's probably got a pretty good grip. On, maybe he's ahead of everybody else in terms of you know what we said a long time ago that it was rotten at the top i mean he definitely said that the the you know the the law enforcement agencies were hijacked basically uh, mm -hmm. against these politicians and uh it's a serious serious situation so um and then to be ordered to uh, do various things uh is is potentially a big you know another thing so it's going to be interesting to to see whether what that what comes of that uh so uh, he he i mean uh, it's pretty hard imagine if that poor girl was put in solitary confinement for 10 months that, that would be pretty brutal uh she's a he was saying that she's being taken to a sort of a uh, more luxurious surroundings these days. Um, and what exactly was she guilty of doing? Not much, apparently. Really? <laughs> you know? Really? Yeah. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, there's a, a swap uh, any day now with that guy that they, you know, they, they trumped up charges against him in Moscow. Ah, and they, yeah. do a, they do a trade. Yeah, and and so, so, so we've got a game of uh, chess with human chess pieces here. Pawns yeah. in the game, as they say. Yeah. Look at that head and shoulders on that thing. Wow. Uh, Down about here? Yeah, yeah, that's the... That's the Dow. That's on a 30-minute. Yeah. Yeah. That neckline. What, what, what draw... Oh, yesterday we were talking about... Going, going down to about 26... No, we were talking uh, about copper yesterday. Remember yeah. when we talked about this potential head and shoulders right here? Yeah. And yeah. this neckline and the measured move... It looks like we just tripped looks, over the line there. This looks like that's going to happen now, and uh, it it unfortunately, well, you never know because the first there's always a the first few days of shock horror on these tariffs, and then things sort of settle. I wouldn't be. I think this tariffs thing has given the Fed cover to do an emergency rate, uh, you know, uh, rate cut. Uh, you saw Trump's tweet about Powell this morning, of course, right? Yeah, I guess he was kind of expecting something and it didn't, didn't happen, so, but... Uh, I mean, talk about calling that, you know, somebody out publicly. It doesn't yeah, he's get... gone, gone a bit over the top there, I yeah, think. I think so. I think yeah, so. but uh, there's obviously a lot of drama developing and with this whole thing. It's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. While I'm um, on this chart, let me just mention to the audience, folks, the logical swing trader is out of beta. Okay, I know a lot of you participated in the three-week beta. That's over. We've launched. We're live. There are trades in the hopper. Now, I'm so confident that you're going to find this an indispensable tool to assist you in your trading. I'm going to give you 30 days free to earn the money to pay for your subscription. Who does that? We do because we're that confident. If you go to our Twitter page, which is twitter.com slash cfrn twitter.com slash cfrn you'll find the links okay monthly it's 197 bucks if you want to save some money uh about 1500 dollars go annual 1500 bucks your first 30 days are free cancel anytime anytime you decide you don't want the swing trade anymore you can cancel please though have the courtesy of canceling five days ahead of your next billing cycle 
because if you don't want to be billed, we don't want to bill you. But sometimes it, it takes a minute for this kind of stuff to go through the system. So as long as you give us that five days head up, heads up, no problem. You won't get billed again. So get out there, get swinging. Now trade this thing in SIM to your consistently profitable. I don't care what you try and who it comes from. You must <laughs> always trade it in SIM until you're comfortable with it, until you're consistently profitable. Only then do you deploy real money. And I believe over the next 30 days, you'll still have time to earn the money to pay for your subscription. And you know what? If you don't cancel it before you get billed the first month, or the first year. I don't know how to be any more fair than that. I wish you no, all it's a great, good luck. It's a great deal. It's a great deal. It's a great deal for sure. I mean, look, you've got 30 days to check, check it out. I think that's that's pretty pretty decent. Um, so, uh, the by the way, Faoud, uh, who you mentioned, he lives in Borneo. Thanks, thanks for oh, reaching yes, out. Who, uh, yeah, and, and yeah, he offered to. Uh, yeah, you, you got the message. I sent. I sent you what you typed. Yeah. 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 And, uh, are you here today, to Fouad? Are, are you in here today? Put a little something in the chat box. Let me know if you're. He's, yeah, a, he's I, an I attorney. Mean, That's what he, yeah, as a profession, I've he's learning to be a trader. I've but I've been in his neck of the woods. I've been, in, I've been to Borneo. I've been to a few places there. Have you? Yeah, go to Kinabalu and uh, up in Sulawesi and around there, all that area. I actually had one of the most hair-raising air flights in my life, flying into that place uh, the, at the time. Which was quite a while ago. The, I got to sit in the cockpit. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I, these fellows were like a couple of cow cowboys flying the plane, and the plane was kind of swerving all over the place. And uh, I really thought we were going to, you know, uh, it was over for us. <laughs> and then another flight like that from Trinidad to Tobago, and it's only a very short flight, uh, but um, pretty scary, you know. The most hair raising airplane. I ever traveled on was from I think it was I think we we boarded in LA and we were going to the I had won a trip a company I worked for had won a sales contest and we had a trip to the Cal Neva Lodge <clears throat> which sits right on the border of California and Nevada it's what, what's the name of the lake up there the big blue beautiful lake uh, somebody in the audience help me out here uh, in Nevada? In the, yeah, right on the California-Nevada line. Reno? Reno uh, it's, it's above Reno. Uh, uh, there's a little... What is that little town called? Tahoe. Thank you so much, Mark. Yeah, Lake Tahoe. Tahoe. Yeah. Yeah. We flew from... I think it was... I think we went from Phoenix to L.A. And then we got on uh, one of these little puddle jumpers. Uh, I couldn't believe they were putting us on a prop plane, but they did. This is not quite a few years ago. And we got about halfway to Lake Tahoe, and we hit turbulence. Now, if you've been in turbulence on a big jet airliner, that's one thing. But when you're in a little prop plane, there was about, you know, the capacity of the plane was only about 10, maybe 20 people. That thing was jumping around and lurching. I was terrified. My wife was terrified. I mean, wow, what a hair-raising experience. And we landed safely, uh, got a speeding ticket on the way to the hotel. Got to the hotel just in time. It started to snow. And what was supposed to be a three-day bonus vacation turned into a week because we got snowed in there. We couldn't get out. What a beautiful place to get snowed in. And that's where uh, John Kennedy, John F. Kennedy and the crowd he ran, ran with, Maryland, they used to go to the Cal Neva Lodge. And before his time, uh, Capone used to hang out there. Beautiful old place. What you want to look at now, John? Um, well, I think, uh, you know, based on the way we're going today, like I say, the do you can see, you know, it, I, all the way things are shaping up today, it looks like a major trend um, change. And probably have a look at the S&P because I think the it's going to go, go down to the numbers we talked about yesterday now. Let's, much let's look at the like cash it. market. I showed that to the guys in the uh, in the room this morning. Here's the cash. Now, this is on a daily. Uh, I mean, it's, Let me put that it on is, 30 yeah, minutes. That's, that's, that is amazing, that chart. Look at that. Wow. Okay. Now, so here's I the gap say, more open on the S&P yeah. cash this morning, guys. The, now, the cash index does not trade overnight, okay? Yeah. Because it's a benchmark of equities of the 500 companies 
that are part of the that make up the S and P 500, they stop trading at 4 p.m. Eastern. This stops moving at 4 p.m. right here. So yesterday we closed at 29.23, and then this morning at 9.30 we reopened at 29.11. So it's about a 12 yeah, point gap lower the, open. What you had a, a short while ago daily? there. Yeah. Here's daily. Okay. I mean, <clears throat> look at that chart because oh, it, it's it really, going lower. Yeah, I agree yeah, with you. And I mean, you know, that chart actually yesterday probably told you the story better than because remember we we sort of went up overnight and so you could have been you, you could have thought mm -hmm. oh maybe we're going to mm -hmm. you know maybe power's going to pull it out of the, pull it out in the hat and something's going to happen but now there's this there's not much that can turn this market at the way it's looking and it, it all it, and of course the other as we said you know we're shaping up now for i mean we had a down thursday We've got a down Friday, a seriously down Friday. This is a little bit like 87. You know, if we have a very bad Monday and Tuesday, or Monday going into Tuesday next week, you know, they, they, they remember they averted Armageddon a week ago or, or a couple of weeks ago now off this 800 point down, down move. But now we're, we're heading to take it out. And uh, the next, and this is a C wave. So, uh, you know, we could hit that 27, 25 area pretty, pretty fast, you know, maybe even by the end of next week or even sometime next week. Uh, this looks pretty, pretty bad. And um, I'd say, uh, you know, uh, this could be, so, you know, the question is, are, is this going to be over soon when we get down there and we turn back up? Or is it the beginning of something more, more, elongated and the other thing is uh, if you can look let's look at the week on that now the weekly absolutely <clears throat> there we go yeah so i mean if you said remember what i said before if these little two feet get taken out mm -hmm. that's that's devastatingly bad it's a really very bad uh, weekly development then you've got two little feet pushing us down um you know the first support is that 27, 20 to 50 area. Can it hold there is the next big question. Um, and if we look at the monthly, uh, we're, we're only a few days before the end of the month now. So there we go. There's monthly. Yeah, it's bad because you've got that doji reversal and now you've got a big monthly downer. So if we, if we hit um, 27, 20 or so by the end of the month, it's, it's not a very hopeful sign for September actually at the moment. And um, this is what uh, I shared Sunday night <clears throat> around midnight, uh, my time. Uh, the week's off to a bullish start and it was Sunday night, but I anticipate lower prices as the week progresses. And up until yeah. today, I thought, you know, maybe I just didn't see it correctly. Of course, we had no way to the tweet saying, come yeah. out. Yeah. You know, we, yesterday afternoon you, we were talking. Uh, the last few days I've noticed you were looking for a kind of a downer, and so that was a good call. And um, it really is, you know, I mean, look, it was easy to get kind of. If you remember what I said yesterday, I said it's taken too long. You know, it's not like this reversal here that went straight back up. Right. This this this, this time that's it's just taken too long, and actually it's very dangerous now because we've taken that long. You know, we're, we're probably going to have a pretty severe break, a multi-day break to the downside here. Uh, and it's probably going to take out that previous low. Right and, here, guys, uh, where you see this bullish cross, okay, that's an area where we're going to, I'm pretty confident, uh, high probability, we're going to find a bounce right there, right yeah. at the price where we got the bullish cross that took us to the all-time historic high. After that, we've got the 62% Fib on the daily chart. And then we've got this swing low, then we've got this swing low, and then that brings us all the way back to the low that was put in uh, June 3rd. So, yeah. it's not a forecast, just telling you what, what the chart says right now. We would have to do so much work to head higher. I mean, we pulled up to the BBC, which we expect to be good resistance, and it was for one, two, three, four days, and then finally, I mean, the market tried. Four days, the market well, tried to go higher, and it couldn't do it. Tried. It had a pretty snappy rebound, and... and uh... It, it, you know, it probably was uh, intervention of sorts. And remember, look, look, the Chinese market turned up. Actually, let's have a look at the FXI right now because sure. that will give us a, a 
hint of what's going on over there. Okay, there we go. That's on a monthly yeah, or I mean, daily. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look, it's a really bad shot. Yeah, well, the monthly looks, yeah, that looks, yeah. yeah there's an air pocket underneath where we're at right now. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, we had this kind of uh, encouraging rally and then it's over. And, uh, let's have a look at Baba and, uh, and then Baidu. Yeah, the Chinese market looks terrible. It looks, it looks like it's going a lot lower. No. Okay, there's Baba. Yeah, you know, so much for the rally. Um, uh, it's one of the strongest stocks, but the overall, if you look at the whole thing, it probably means it's going to break down. And uh, leaving island tops there as well. So, uh, and Baidu, I think, is probably already heading for new lows by the looks of it. Here's Baidu. <laughs> oh, no, not so much. Not so much. Maybe, you know, the fact that these stocks are looking a bit better, you know, I, I, I was encouraged by this last week, but, you know, Baidu could still potentially go the other way and could break out to the upside based on that pattern. But on the other hand, if it, if it gets back down below 100 again, uh, it's probably going to test the 95 and possibly even go down to 90 or so. But, but I would say Baidu would probably be a pretty good buy if it gets down to 90. Let me scrunch that up a little bit. <clears throat> I remember when Baidu went public, uh, what was it, about 2003? Uh, I think it was about 2007. I remember you telling me it was the Chinese equivalent of Google, and I was so green at that point. I remember going, "What does that even mean?" I, I, I remember that so clearly. Thanks. Uh, okay, so yeah. it looks like I can go, go I, back to two thousand and seven. I think it's. Uh, uh, let me see if I can go back that far. I maybe two thousand five. It's probably about two thousand and five. Two thousand six. It looks like. Yeah. No. Here's August of oh five. We launched yeah. CFRN in April of oh five. Yeah. It's certainly, uh, I mean, it's had an incredible ride. And yeah. I mean, I'm just stunned that it's been uh, been hammered so much. Actually, we should look at another stock called Meli uh, Mercado Libre, uh, L-I, M-E-L-I. L-E-M-I? No, sorry, M-E-L-I. M-E-L-I. Yeah, wow, that thing got all the way to 700. Okay, now wow. this is the uh, Me Mexico's answer to Alibaba and Amazon. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. And it certainly has been performing incredibly well. Yeah, I mean, well. that was an incredible day right there. Oh, that's earnings. So apparently yeah. they, they hit their number and yeah. they've come off. A couple of other stocks that have been doing well. They were doing well earlier today. AD, uh, ADBE. ADBE? Adobe? Yeah. Yeah. You know, their products are so expensive. Uh, I know well, that's, got, why that's why their stock price is so high. <laughs> yeah, you know, but but then again, I've taken free trials of some of their stuff, and I would love to be able to use it. And it's not that I can't afford it; I can't figure it out. It's so complex. It's like climb, just their little uh, thing for creating uh, audio files, you know, like for running the pod. They've got a thing for running a podcast with, and all the audios. It's like climbing into the uh, into the cockpit of a of spaceship or something. There's so many switches and dials and levers and knobs. I, I don't. I don't have enough years left to learn all that. Uh, uh, Intu. Intu. Okay. That hit a new high this morning. New all-time high. Looks pretty bullish. That stock. Now those are the folks that brought us QuickBooks. Yeah. When and, I started uh, my last company, before CFRN, we were on. We didn't even have a shoestring. We, we had to use Velcro. Uh, I got off the TV. There was an ad for QuickBooks. 30-day <clears throat> free trial. They sent you the CD-ROM in the mail. I got it. I learned how to use it. The business was coming to life. And when my 30 days was up, I couldn't afford to pay for the doggone software. So I found out if you re reinstalled it in a different directory on your computer. Now, I know that's stealing, folks, and I'm just admitting it to everybody and into it. If you installed it in a different directory, you could get another 30 days free. And I just kept moving it from directory to directory until the company started to blossom. And then I went down and gladly bought the professional multi-station version of QuickBooks. I didn't even need it all, but I felt like I owed them something because they had helped me get my business off the ground. So 
You know, I bought like four or five hundred dollars worth of software from. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, Intuit. Have a look at uh, CMG. CMG. Chipotle. I do not like their food. My wife yeah, loves it. My son a, loves it's it. Made a, it's made a new all-time high again today. Or <clears throat> so. Um, it just tastes kind of bland to me. But, yeah. uh, the, but you know, a lot of these, just just about everything is turning down today. And I think the bonds are hitting. A, you know, they've probably gone to an inversion deal again. Which is which is Let's take you know, right. adding adding to the market uh, markets the down, ZB, downside momentum. ZB T bond futures. Okay, that's weekly. Let's go to a thirty minute. <clears throat> okay, there's bonds on a thirty minute. Yeah, so we're you know we're making new highs now. So the question is, are we going to go all the way to one seventy two, the previous all time high, uh, or close to it? Probably probably we will. Um, have a look at the day, the dust. The last DUSD. night we on the bonds. Last night on the concierge, we said to consider being long the bonds at one sixty four sixteen, and when we hit one sixty five sixteen this morning, that's a one thousand dollar per contract move, guys. So yeah. I know a lot of you don't trade bonds because as a new trader, it's difficult because it's thirty one twenty five per tick. There's 32 yeah. ticks to a point, and at 31 bucks a tick, you get a haircut real quick if you're not on the right side of the trade. Yeah, you know, the way you the say market is setting up, you say? Um, well, I would say that, that we're, we're probably going to spike up to 172 on the bonds. Okay. Yeah. But you told me and, to go to a different uh, chart, I think. Uh, so, the because if we have a very bad day down on Monday, which looks like it's going to happen now, I mean, we could have a really bad day. We could have a thousand dollar, thousand point down. down Sunday day night is going to be a blast. I'm looking yeah, forward to it. Maybe, 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 might be an all time, all time record down day on Monday. Could happen. That could push the bonds up towards 170, 172. Um, and the gold, it just if you put the dust up, DUST. Sure. What time daily? Yeah. So we're just about hitting all time lows on this thing. Every which is uh, wow we are yeah so it's it, it's just uh, uh, can you I mean, explain to the folks what the dust is it's a triple uh, triple um, bearish bearish gold yeah triple bearish gold stocks gold stocks so if, if gold falls a dollar it's like it fell three dollars right is that exactly okay. exactly um, and, uh, and I can work for you or against let's, you. Let's have a look at the let's look at the J nug. Uh, okay. Or oh, put the nugget up first, if you would. Uh, N U G T. T. Yeah. Okay. There it is on the so daily. So remember, we said, look. Actually, if you could load, I mean, look at that chart because a you've got a long way to go up. Uh, you know, if uh, if the price continues to go higher, remember right now gold stocks. Because we're getting to, you know, this is free money for gold now. Uh, even even when we talked about Santa Fe yesterday, the the projections, the the original projections were done at twelve thirty five, so we are three hundred dollars higher than those initial projections, which were pretty pretty good, <laughs> pretty pretty impressive at the time. Mm -hmm. And we're right now one hundred and thirty, hundred almost one hundred and forty above the most recent projections. I, I, that fourteen hundred. So you got a lot of built-in upside <clears throat> on these gold stocks, and you know when the penny drops, uh, it'll probably be a buying stampede on a lot of these gold stocks, because <clears throat> if we if we do go up to seventeen hundred or twenty, as I think I mentioned it yesterday, let's just say if a company's lifting like thirty-five thousand dollars a day at fourteen hundred, that's fifty thousand a day at nineteen hundred. Think about that. Wow. Uh, that's so you're talking about you know 15, 15 uh, all that 15,000 extra dollars a day that's basically free money and obviously if we go to 2400 on the gold you know the and you know a 2400 dollar gold if you're if you're if you're let's say you're if your optimal grades are a half an ounce per ton that's that means you you know right now half an ounce per ton is getting you close to 800 dollars a ton that's a lot of money for a ton of earth. Um, then, if you 
even if you're getting a quarter of an ounce, it's not four hundred dollars a ton is a is generally considered to be a an economic kind of a grade. Old would be an economic grade at that. They were able to upgrade the tailings from three million ounces to six million ounces. That was a you know an un, a very unusual thing to happen, but it, it happened and uh, it was legitimate. Where, you know because of the improvement in the price was made uh, made the recovery of the gold much more uh, much much more possible if you like uh, uh, from you know economically speaking so, have you seen this report John uh, drag it up are the quant signals leaning a certain way on Santa Fe Gold Corp and BNK Petroleum I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but uh, I'll put the link in the chat box. I, I don't know. Uh, look, you know, the, uh, I mean, look, the, the, this, there's certain, just from my perspective, and you can do your own homework on it, the company is very close to shipping ore. The minute that happens, and, and in a way, I mean, look, would you rather sell ore at 1400 like a month ago? <laughs> Or uh, or fifteen thirty eight today, or starting next week maybe a fifteen fifty or sixteen hundred. Just the fact that it's taken a bit longer to get uh, production going is actually a windfall for the company because they're going to be selling gold possibly at sixteen hundred or seventeen hundred dollars an ounce, and, and silver instead of doing it at fifth, less than fifteen dollars, it's now going to be seventeen and a half dollars and it might be eighteen or nineteen within a few weeks time. The economics of that are pretty incredible, I'm telling you. Uh, the, uh, um, you know, it's the difference between if the company does 800,000 a month at, uh, at $1,400, uh, you know, we, at 1,600, we, you know, it's a million a month or it might be more than a million a month. So this is all net, net, net money, net profit. You know, it, over over the operating because the operating is a relatively fixed price. Uh, so this is a uh, this 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 is why you see the JNUG has the potential to go through the roof in the future. And remember, in I mean, we're we're at a six-year high in gold, and uh, ex, you know, you can almost explain to me how uh, I said when in 2016 when the gold took off for the first half year of 2016 remember it looked like Hillary was going to win and the gold was being bought you know in a mania almost in a panic buying mania because if the the the, the, the idea was if 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 Hillary had won we'd probably be in a hyperinflationary world by now and you know? all the smart guys said that if Trump won the markets would crash <laughs> yeah so and uh, so you know when Trump won the did the gold did come back and and that's and so we that's what created the opportunity in the last couple of years to be able to acquire a lot of these properties for low prices but now it's turned the tables have turned and the the, the the gold is i mean what i'm trying to say is if you let's go back to that jnug chart because it's okay. kind, of, kind of instructive or, or the nugget either one here's the nugget right here okay well look go uh, if you can go forget about the, the look even look at 20 look at 2011 right <laughs> look at the price we got to on that thing and we're only um 350 dollars away from from that price right now in gold now j just go to 20 just go for the last just look at it from 2016 onwards okay you want to go like daily on that yeah yeah okay <clears throat> okay so okay, look, look at that. So we, so we got up to 140, and right now we're at 39. And the price of gold today is higher than it was when the nugget was 140. Think about that. Now, okay, so now why is that? Well, because back then, I guess they thought we were going to go to the moon. <laughs> okay. And uh, the, the, there certainly was an explosion. But I think we may be just because if you could just uh, go to just 2019, and the last year on that now. Now, remember what I said a couple of days ago? I said we, we had just spread it out a little bit more. Just a, okay. We had a series of one twos. This first one two, this first liftoff, remember there's the, the very low doji down at the bottom, 
right? Then we had we had such a powerful liftoff. The two was barely a pullback before we just streaked higher up to 32, right? Right. Then there was a bit more of a pullback, but it didn't give up much ground. It didn't even fill that gap. So we got double, triple, quadruple breakaway gaps. Incredibly bullish. Then we had another break breakaway gap right up to here. Then we had the first sort of serious pullback, which was reversed in a day. This thing jumped eight went, bucks in one day right here. Exactly. Now, and then look at this, what's going on now, where you, you know, th what I said is we've got quadruple one twos and this steep one two and the potential, you know, it looks like it's going to gap up um, on Monday. And I think we could be hitting 50 by Monday or Tuesday on this thing. Uh, uh, it's in a very, very powerful up move. And if you just put in the, the JNUG, let's have a look at that. It not, it's not, you know, the, the nugget's a little bit more bullish in some respects, you know, because it's a little bit closer to the high. But as I, you know, I said a few days ago, we could go 30 on the JNUG, and I think we're probably going to go there now because the when you get ex when these expand, the ranges expand in these one twos, you know, we're, we're, we're probably in a third wave right now. We're, we're at the beginning of the third wave in the gold. So, and this should be a pretty sustained up move. In other words, one, two, three, basically should be about a, a three to four month up move from here, probably right into the end of the year, this gold uh, in a third wave. And that could take us all the way to 1900 or maybe even 2400. Uh, and it's definitely going to take, I think that the JNUG could go to 200, uh, you know, maybe even 250 on this run. And then uh, go to, um, can you put Royal Gold up? Uh, you betcha. <clears throat> RGLD. Okay. It, it is uh, on the point of breaking out here, possibly headed for a pretty big run now. Uh, and if you could uh, put up USLV, this is the triple silver, and guess what? Look, it's it's leading the way higher now. We're breaking out to new highs that on thing's, silver. That thing's knocking on a hundred dollar. Uh, not gonna, not gonna as I said it well, I thought it was going to go to a hundred. If you could squeeze it up a bit, because sure. this is actually a super dynamic chart. This is, a, and we talked about that. If you remember, we we, we put a target on it. I mean, it looks like it's going to, it'll go to 120, 100, if you could put the silver up now. We'll and one thing you, you don't want to do, uh, folks, and, and this is opinion, right? But you don't want to chase these markets. Once they take off, once the move's underway, you're always going to be a couple ticks behind, woulda, coulda, shoulda. I mean, if, if you have plans to, to deploy part of your portfolio into the world of gold and silver in whatever way that you choose to do it, Take your position now, right? You could literally be looking at three thousand dollar gold here, fifty dollars twice. Yeah. And if you believe what I tell you every day about important prices, important areas are almost always tested. Well, have a look at silver. In fact, let's have a look at silver. It, so, it's it's doing what we predicted. I mean, it really is. I mean, it is, it's almost at a point now where it can't restrain itself from moving higher. And uh, I, to me, that's when it turns dynamically bullish. And it really is looking like, and look at that. We're hitting new high. You know, the silver's, the, Dwayne, the silver's pulling ahead of the gold here. This is super bullish when this happens. I tell you. Look at that. We could see 18 bucks next year. That, 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 that is as good as it gets. I mean, that is yeah. just su yeah, you know, superb. So, the, uh, on f uh, the grains breaking down, obviously, because of the China issue, I guess. And so, you know, uh, we'll have to see what, you know, maybe uh, what I would say now is if we do get a very bad Monday and they don't, we don't get a reprieve, uh, we want to be, we might do a, an early session on uh, Tuesday if you can, because uh, yeah, Tuesday just, could, just be, give me a heads up. could be a great day to be buying stocks here and uh, reversing. So, uh, and possibly even buying we, you the know, in fact, we, John, we had a good turnout. We filled up the room the last time we did an 
a special report. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The doggone software let us down and we had to fold our tent. We should try and do it on this platform if you can so that... Well, you know, this this yeah. platform is... is I'll, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll make sure the other platform is working because we have to use this one. This platform that we're on now, we have to use that for the live training room in the morning. Well, maybe you can borrow an hour from Mike or something. No, maybe. no, I'll, I'll, I'll get us, I'll get us squared away. In fact, what we might do, I, I kind of like that new Zoom platform. Have you used that? They went public oh, yeah. a couple oh. months ago. Z O O M. Yeah, very, yeah, yeah. very easy to use. Uh, I kind of maybe we'll use that uh, on Monday. I'll, I'll give you. A, I'll talk to you over the weekend. Let you know for sure. Yeah, but it could be. Um, it could be. Uh, you know, it's the, the way things are shaping up here. Uh, this is, I mean, what are we down about 500 now or something? Five or 600. I'm going to send you a video too. Uh, Michael had to be out this morning for an hour or so. Valerie yeah. stepped in. She ran the room. She called the market. She was putting on and taking off like a boss. We recorded it. I'm going to send you the video, John. You're going to really enjoy it. Yeah, no, it. I'd like to hear it. Like She's hear sharp. It. She really is. She's a good presenter. Yeah. Anything else you want to look at? No, listen, thanks very much indeed for the invite. And I um, have a great afternoon and a super weekend. All right. You too. I'll talk to you over the weekend. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. Hokey doke. Uh, let's go back to the S&P. Okay. Concierge trade alert last night. Consider being short 29.17. We dropped to the weekly trading zone where we expect to find good support until we don't. We did. 12 point drop from the entry from the published entry to the published support we expect it to be support coming down and then when price approaches a zone from below we expect it to be good resistance it's been that way for 10 years i can vouch for that because we've been publishing these zones for 10 almost 10 years in december but looking Beyond, but if I go onto historical charts and apply the same principles, it's been going on forever. So that in and of itself is pretty exciting. So when price comes down to a zone, we expect it to be good support. So it sends it back up to the zone overhead, which we expect to be good resistance. Sends it back down to the zone, and this time we sliced right through it. These are 30-minute candles. So when we got to this zone, we consolidated for a bit. If I were to drop this now to like a five minute chart, you could see a bunch of jockeying back and forth right across this zone. Then we dropped <clears throat> to the zone below that, bounced back up. That's what we expect. Didn't quite bounce all the way back up. <clears throat> 78 to the zone and we bounced to 76. And we're still consolidating. Now, only three things can happen at a weekly trading zone. Only three. The markets are filled with endless possibilities. So when you take anything market related and say only three things can happen with this, that's, that's a tall order to fill. The most likely thing is consolidation, which you see here. And here. The second most likely is rejection right here. Price ran up to the zone and got rejected. Think of a stove. You reach over, you touch the stove. <laughs> Turns out it's hot. You snatch your hand back, right? Rejection. The only other thing that can happen at a weekly trading zone it's called the slice. <clears throat> this isn't really a slice here. This is, okay? Now, did the high probability thing happen here when we got the slice? Not really. And let me explain that. When we slice through a zone like it's not even there, and again, that is the least likely thing to even happen, typically what will happen, we slice through, we find support, okay? Price then pulls back up to the zone that it sliced through, and in this case would confirm it as good resistance. Remember it was support, 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 support. Pull back, confirm resistance, and then continue in the direction of the slice. 
might have one of those examples handy right here. Come on, Chuck. Can I scroll back a tad? <clears throat> Looking for a slice. Well, as we look at these other markets, I might see one and I'll point it out to you. Same on every market. Everything that I show you on this S&P chart, everything, it applies to the Dow, to the Russell, to the NQ, gold, crude, soybeans, the euro, the pound, the beat goes on. Okay. Last night, Concierge Trade Alert. If you did not grab yourself a screenshot when I put them up, I'm going to put them up again real quick. I was leaking them out last night. We had the partner workshop. It was a good one. Oh, and I'm going to go over that explanation with you here in a minute. All right. So on the Dow, <clears throat> 26180. Now, the Concierge Trade Alerts are different from the Logic 247 Alerts. The Concierge Alerts, that's a static report. You get it every evening, shortly after the Globex open, unless I'm running really late. I get it out about midnight. What I recommend that you do when they come out is that you put two lines on your chart. In the case of the Dow, it would be 26335, 26180. Okay, let me show you what I mean. 26335. Gonna be right. Come on down. Two six three three five. All right. I want to get it. All right now. Look at this. Look at this high. Two six three three one. The swing high of that candle right there. Is 26331. The trigger is 26335. So price marched right up to it. I'm not getting a good reading here on this, but suffice it to say the swing high, 26331. The trigger was at 335. We marched right up to it, did an about face turned around and we ran into the other line in the sand okay two lines in the sand every night long side short side when price trades through that number if you have an order standing it will trigger you right in <clears throat> so we triggered we hit the zone which we expect to be good support till it isn't right now here's an example great example we sliced through that zone, we then pulled back up, but I don't think we had a zone right there. Two, six, no. No, we didn't have a zone here, but if we did, okay, it's this, the same principle applies, right? We sliced through, found support, retraced, found good resistance, and then continued in the direction of the slice. So this first drop is 140 points. Alexa, what's 140 times 5? 140 times 5 is 700. Okay, so that's a $700 per contract move, but let's not kid ourselves. I'm not quite sure how to help you with that. Oh, okay, thanks. You did real good. Um, <clears throat> it's real hard to get out at a swing high or swing low because we don't know it's a swing high or swing low till after the fact, okay? Now, we have tools that will help you with that. <clears throat> The second trigger, when I measured it a bit ago, it had dropped 456 points so far. It's dropped a little further now. It's actually bounced back, I think, to about the area where I measured it. <clears throat> important prices, important areas are almost always tested. If you take nothing else away from your experience with us, take that with you, because no matter what method you use for trading the markets, if you keep it in the back of your mind and just watch your charts, you'll see that what I'm saying, it's not an urban myth. It's not a 
market legend, it's a market truth. So we trigger, get back above the trigger, trigger again. Alexa, what's 456 times 5? 456 times 5 is 2280 So this is a $2,280 per contract drop. Okay? Now. Hmm, I'm not sure. No, no, you're a little over eager today. You're doing real good. Just, just be patient, okay? Now you notice I've typed on the chart here, no exit signal. What the heck's an exit signal? Uh, I'm gonna show you. <clears throat> this black line is called the step line. When the step line crosses this red and falling CFMA1, and eventually it will, the first green candle that closes above the step line after it crossed over, that's the exit signal. So it gives you a price to exit to the tick. Now, that only applies to extended moves. Okay, what's well, an extended move? Here's an example. The average swing under normal conditions for the S&P 500 E-mini is three to five points. So if you're in a directional move, once you go beyond five points, you are now in an extended move. And this is where you'll be able to use the exit signal. Like here, we've dropped 500 points, okay? The step line has to cross the red and falling first, then we get a green close above it. That's the market telling us, hey, this move is probably over, at least for now. We may get some sideways consolidation, take your profits, go your merry way okay now hold for me one second please not going anywhere okay <clears throat> let's go to the russell oh and the russell you know what let me jump over here and we'll use the same example uh that we used last night in the workshop okay alert number two five four six I'm going to just show it to you in the channel as well. Okay. So alert number 2546 right here. Consider long RTYU 9, 1510 to 1512 and tip. Okay. To a civilian, they're like, what? You know, what does that even mean? Do I get it at 1510? Do I get it at 1512? Somewhere in between? Who am I supposed to tip? What if I didn't get good service? It's not that kind of tip. That means trail if possible, okay? So the question in the workshop last night was, Wayne, could you just walk me through an alert, how to read it, how to understand it? Absolutely, okay? Alert number 2546, consider long the Russell E. Mini at 1510. So right there, there's your entry, 1510. What was really nice is the question came last night during the workshop. So we actually got to see this thing. It had just triggered when the question came in and then we got to see it do its thing. So that was nice. That type of learning is always beneficial, which makes the whole concept of logic beneficial to you if you're learning to trade, because you're not just learning from a textbook or, or from some videos, you're learning live in real time. You learn something and then you get to turn right around in a live market and apply it. That's a beautiful way to learn. Okay, so consider being long, 1510. Initial target is 1512. The zone overhead is your trade to target. So where a casual observer might go, gee, that's a two-point trade. You know, how much am I going to risk on that? Well, we don't see it as a two-point trade. We see it as a trade that has the potential to go nine points. This one didn't, okay? It doesn't change anything. It just didn't do it this time, okay? So we want to get long 1510, 1512, 
that's two points, $100 per contract. We set our stop loss uniquely on every alert. We base our stop loss on market structure. I teach every one of our traders personally a three-step methodology, and I went into great detail last night in the workshop. So for those of you that are partners and passport holders, if you get a chance, try to watch that over the weekend. It might help you with your stops. So I teach a three-step methodology using market structure to assign an equitable stop loss, okay? Now, if we can't find an equitable stop loss using the three-step method, we either just walk away from the alert or we wait for it to come back and trigger again. Because remember, important prices, important areas are almost always tested. Our stop loss on this one was at 15.04 based upon our methodology, okay? We never wanna risk more than $300 per contract per trade to find out if our narrative is valid, okay? In this case, we were risking exactly $300. The Russell pays $50 a point. So this was a six point stop loss up against a potential nine point target, okay? So we trigger and we go to the target. We get back below the trigger. We go to the target. We get back below the trigger and we go to the target. Important prices, important areas, almost always tested. So did we ever make it to 1519? Well, you can see that we didn't. Were there multiple opportunities to take a couple points plus out of this alert? There was. Using our three-step methodology, I also showed our traders last night how they could have reduced the stop loss to only two points on this trade. I'm not gonna go into that here, but if you become a passport holder or a partner, rest assured, I will teach you everything that I teach all of our traders, okay? Now, <clears throat> let me open this up a little bit. So on this final trigger, we go to the target, then we come off, um, go, and now as it's coming off, well, let me just show you, hang on. Price gets above the BBC right here. This is so simple, you're gonna have a hard time even believing it, but trust me, it's true. When price, but you know, you don't have to trust me, just put it to the test, figure it out for yourself, see? And then you'll go, oh yeah, he was right. When price is above the BBC, we anticipate higher prices, okay? Now, we taught, those of you that, that have access and can watch the video, we identified two obstacles that would prevent us from getting to the trade to target at 1519. First obstacle, right here. Second obstacle, right there. So on the video, you'll hear me carefully explain. All right, guys. If we get to this area, expect it to be good resistance till it isn't. As long as price stayed above the BBC, there was a possibility that we would take out this obstacle, trade up to this obstacle, and if we could get through that, then go on to the trade to target. But when this candle closed below the BBC and walked us sideways, Look what it led to. When price is above the BBC, we anticipate higher prices. When it gets below, we anticipate lower prices. And lower prices, we got. Okay. Now, that's how you read every single alert that you see in the alert channel. Okay. 
So maybe some of you that were on the trial this week and you weren't quite clear on that, I, I wish you'd ask the question, but you didn't, so I'm giving the answer anyway. This is the alert number. When I put this one out, this was alert number 2,546. We're in week 55 of the Logic 247 alert service. Consider long, that means buy, 1510 entry price. Next number is the initial target. Now, sometimes, and I could have done it with this one, but I didn't. This is exactly how it was done. When you see an alert that has multiple targets, like this one could have said 1510 to 1512 to 1514 to 1517 and tip, trail if possible. I could have written it that way. I think I was probably in a hurry on this one. It's one of the reasons I didn't. But that's what that that's how you read it. Entry, initial target, next target, next target, and then you know, like if price had taken out this obstacle and this obstacle, traded through the zone, well then we'd be looking at the zone overhead. Okay. Last night on the concierge trade alerts. We said, consider being short at or below 1506. The, lo the long line in the sand was up at 1522. And the short side, 1506. Okay, here's 1506. Right here. $50 a point, from 15.06, we dropped. Now, at, at when you enter at 15.06, your trade to target is 15.03. We sliced through this zone, but typically, well, you know what typically is. So we went from 15.06, we traded through the trade to target at 15.03, and we put in a swing low at 14.91. So, what is that, nine, it's 14 point, Alexa, what's 14 times 50? 14 times 50 is 700. Thank you. Important Good prices. Time. I hope you're having a great Friday. I am, thank you. It's third Friday. I love third Fridays. Uh, the whole family, we go downtown. Uh, I worked, I built my last company downtown. I uh, started CFRN downtown. But there's just something about downtown Phoenix. Uh, it's changed so much over the years. I got mugged down there when I first moved to Phoenix. Well, they tried to mug me. I had two things to my name. I had a pack of cigarettes and a Walkman back in the day. And some clown with fancy tennis shoes wanted me to give him my Walkman. I, I was serious too, and I'm not a big guy. I'm not a I'm not a tough guy. I've been in my fair share of scrapes, but I I just looked at him and said, "Man, if you want it, you're gonna have to take it." There was three of them. He looked at me. He looked at his buddies. And they both. He this fool must be crazy. He must be. I still got my Walkman. Yeah, I do. <laughs> it's in the garage, but okay. Back above the trigger. Now, this time, we drop 15.06. Alexa, what's 15.06 minus 1464? 1,506 minus 1,464 equals 42. Alexa, what's 42 times 50? 42 times 50 is 2,100. Okay, that's what this... That's what the market has made available via this alert so far, okay? And we don't have an exit signal. We need the step line to cross over. We need a green candle to close above it. And that's the market itself telling you time to get out, okay? All right, uh, I gotta pick up the pace here. NQ, last night on the NQ, consider being short, 76.99. 76.99, that's gonna be right about here.
Okay, the initial drop, if just down to the zone, which we expect to be good support, and it was. See, see how that how that works. Uh, Alexa, seventy six ninety nine minus seventy six fifty four. Seven thousand six hundred ninety nine minus seven thousand six hundred fifty four is forty five. Okay, so that twenty dollars a point. This is a nine hundred dollar per contract trade from the entry to the trade to target. If you've earned the right to trade 10 contracts, it's a $9,000 move. Whatever you do, don't trade more contracts than you've earned the right to trade. Don't even go live until you earn the right to go live. Well, how'd I do that? Simple. Our 2420 blueprint lays it out. You start learning the methodology, you start practicing, you get familiar with everything. You sim trade until you put together 10 consecutive days in a row where you reach a $100 daily goal in 10 trades or less. Once you accomplish that, the blueprint will give you the green light to go live with one contract. We want you to stay with that one contract until you increase your account balance by $2,000. Now in a perfect world, if you're grossing a hundred bucks a day, it'll take 20 trading days to increase your account balance by $2,000. But we know it's, well, God created a perfect world. We screwed it up. It's not his fault, but you're going to get stopped out. Okay. If things are going to happen. So it's probably going to take you more than 20 days. It takes as long as it takes 10 consecutive days in a row, make your hundred bucks, 10 trades or less, get the green light to go live. Once you go live, increase the account balance by two grand. Once you do that, you'll get the green light to add your third contract. Now you're on a calendar based system. The blueprint will let you know ahead of time on what day you'll be adding the next contract. As long as everything goes smooth, life's not a smoothie. Okay. It's got chunks. When you have two days back to back that you don't reach your goal in 10 trades or less, you come out of the live market, you go in back into SIM. It's not a walk of shame. It's a smart business decision. This is how you don't blow up your account again. Two days in a row, two consecutive days, you don't reach your goal in 10 trades or less. Get back in SIM immediately book a mentoring session. You can book it with me. You can book it with Michael. You can, you can book it with both of us. If you want pretty soon, you'll be booking them with Val because after watching her this morning, she can handle most of the questions you got. So, <clears throat> but for now you'll book with me or Michael. We'll spend as much time with you as you need to help figure out what happened. Now this bump in the road, it could come during your, your sim, you're trying to put together your 10 days. It may come after you go live with one. You may have just added your seventh contract and then you hit that rough patch. The process is the same. Slam on the brakes, turn off the engine, get in the other car, the sim car, book the session. We come, we walk through everything that happened with you on the charts. We determine whether you were at fault or maybe it was a no fault accident. See, sometimes the market is simply not conducive to trading. There are times when the market is making up its mind on a small time frame or maybe on a large time frame. There is no high probability move to discern because the market hasn't made up its mind yet. It is so important that you learn when not to trade. You know, if I put it on the scales, I think knowing when not to trade carries a little more weight than knowing when to trade. Yes, you want to know when to trade, but if you've worked hard, man, you know, three days, three weeks, three months, you're pretty proud of yourself and you should be because you've increased your account balance by X amount, whatever that is, 
Then all of a sudden, <clears throat> Trump's not tweeting. There's no economic reports to throw fuel on the fire. Market goes violently sideways for a couple days. All that hard work, three months, can be gone like that. If you keep putting in orders and wondering, what happened? What happens? Don't do that. There's no reason to bleed out on the trading floor. You're not alone anymore. You have a support team. You have help. You have hope with no hype. You come, you sit, we look at the charts, we talk. And now maybe you did do something that you shouldn't have done. Maybe you missed a rule or you forgot a principle or something. Okay, well, that's our job. We'll point that out. Not going to shame you, but we'll point it out. Then you'll want to spend at least a day, maybe two, in sim again. To you, so you regain your confidence. And if you're at seven contracts when the hiccup came, well, when you go back out, you go back out right where you left off. You don't have to go back to zero and start all over again. If you follow that procedure as laid out in the 2420 blueprint, that gnawing fear that in the pit of your stomach that you wake up with some days, that you're going to, it's days, oh man, it's the day of the day I'm going to blow up my account again. No, it's not. Not if you follow the rules. Always use a hard stop. When you're learning in the live training room, you never risk more than eight ticks on any trade. If, you have, if you've gone live and you have two days back to back where you don't make gold, you're going to come out alive, go to sim. We're going to troubleshoot. I'm telling you, you do not have to ever blow up your account again. Some of you will. That's the nature of man. It doesn't make you bad. It just makes you human. Some of us are more human than others, I guess. If you go against the rules, the guidelines, the principles, and you do blow up your account, we're not going to shun you. We still love you. I'll make sure that you know that you understand what you did wrong because if you blow up your account and that's not the market's fault you did that having down days having trades that don't work out they're not profitable well you know that's the market the market can play a, a, a big role in that okay but i'm i'm just telling you if you blow up your after hearing what i say right here today if you blow up your account again it's 100 percent your fault. Not being mean-spirited, don't want to sound like a bully. What I want you to hear is you don't ever have to go through that agony again. Becoming a passport holder or a partner could well be the most important trading decision you'll ever make. I'm not bragging, I'm not boasting, I'm just being honest with you. This is the truth about trading. There is no hype. There's no smoke and mirrors. It's simple by design. I can teach you how to read a chart. I can teach you how to instinctively see what the market's trying to do, where it's trying to go. I can't promise it'll get there. I can't promise it'll do what it's trying to do, but I can sure help you know what it is that it is trying to do. And when you keep putting yourself on the same side of the street that the market's on, the profitable side, good things can happen. Okay. There's lots of gimmicks out there, lots of parlor tricks, lots of indicator sets and PDFs and videos. Man, nine, 99 .97. And put your toe in the sand. You've already figured out that doesn't work, right? And I know that some of you have gone the other direction too. You know, you knew that $99 crap couldn't work. So you went and got the $20,000 package. <laughs> that one really stumps me because every trading platform I've ever seen 
has fib tools built into it for free. That's a real good sales pitch that gets somebody to, to pay 20 grand for a free tool. But hey, whatever works, unfortunately for most people, it doesn't work. Okay. So if you want to learn about fibs, I'll teach you whatever you want to know. I'll teach you how to use the tools, the retracements, the extensions, whatever. Okay. It's what we do. Again, I'm not bragging. It's, that's, that's our job. That's what you hire us for. Think of it that way. When you become a partner or a passport holder, you're hiring us to teach you how to trade. Now, I can teach you how to trade. I can also teach you how to be a, I can, I can teach you how to play baseball. What I can't do is make you a pitcher for the Yankees or a hitter for the Braves. You got to do that. What we do is not complicated. It's not expensive. And it's available today, right here, right now. You call the shots. You get to make the decision. I do know this. If you continue to do what you've been doing, you will continue to get the same results. Whether those results are bad or good, sporadic, boom and bust, keep doing what you're doing and you'll keep getting the same results. That means you got to do something different, right? If you want different results. Okay. Now that doesn't mean you change your swing every time you step up to the plate. Far from it. You've got to decide on a methodology that you're going to stick to long enough that you actually learn it. You have to give yourself a little bit of time to begin to see the markets the way that we see them. And as you do, you'll begin to think like we think. When that happens, a concierge trade alert might just drop into your Telegram channel or your inbox that would allow you to get short at 76.99, which interestingly enough, two nights in a row, 76.99, two nights in a row, $900 per contract drop to the trade to target. Important prices, important areas, right? This time we go from 76.99. Alexa, 76.99 minus 74.94. 7,699 minus 7,494 is 205. Alexa, what's 205 times 20? 205 times 20 is 4,100. You follow the procedure and the process as outlined in the blueprint. You earn the right to trade 10 contracts. This is a $4,000 move. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Alexa, what's 4,000 times 10? 4,000 times 10 is 40,000. Shut the door. Is it really? Door doesn't support that. <laughs> Lover, this is a $40,000 move if you've earned the right to trade 10 contracts. Are you going to earn the right to trade 10 contracts doing what you're doing now? Maybe you are. If so, let me be the first to congratulate you. If you think the chance of that happening is slim to none, well, you've been on the trial this week. You've seen what we do. You've watched it happen live in real time. Day after day, alert after alert. Again, this week in Logic 247. <clears throat> I've got those numbers right here. Valerie was so kind as to calculate them earlier. And then I got to run, guys. I have a meeting. 
I can't tarry. I just got to say bye here in like two minutes. This week, starting this past Sunday night at 6 p.m. Eastern, we have issued 79 alerts, 14 never triggered. That left us with 65 actionable alerts. 13 of those were stopped out. 20% of actionable alerts this week stopped out. Over the past year, over the past 55 weeks, the average 20% of actionable alerts are stopped out. Okay. I'll be around this afternoon. If you need me, check in Telegram. If you're ready to become a passport holder, get a hold of Valerie. Call her at 949-42-E-MINI. Now, we're going to be in a meeting for the next hour, so give her some time. 949-423-6464. Or just shoot an email to support at cfrn.net. If you call her before the market closes today, no, wait a minute. Call her before 9 p.m. Eastern today. She's got a very, very special $2,000 bonus for you. I ain't kidding. Call her. It is the weekend. CFRN Charter dictates that you must spend quality time with your family. Of course, I'll see you in church Sunday morning. Thanks so much for tuning in. Whoever you are, wherever you are, may God continue to richly bless you with his mercy and with his grace. And I'll see you at the bell. Sunday night. Call 1-866-928-3310. 866-928-3310. Information discussed on this radio program should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Always do your own due diligence and consult with a licensed securities broker or financial planner before making any investment decisions.